Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna see one of the most important applications of Taylor series representations. In this case right here, we're being asked to evaluate the integral from zero to one of e to the negative x squared to an accuracy of at least 0 0.0001. This example is especially important for two reasons. First and foremost, e to the negative x squared is not just some crazy looking function that we'd like to play with, but it's actually essential to the analysis of probability and statistics. The e to the negative x squared is part of the expression for the normal curve. And second, importantly, is that e to the negative x squared does not have an elementary indefinite integral. And what that means is we can't actually write the antiderivative of e to the negative x squared using our functions that we have. Importantly to this statement, an elementary indefinite integral doesn't mean that it's like you use like really basic numbers and expressions, but any function we've ever seen up to this point cannot be used as a representation for the antiderivative or the indefinite integral of e to the negative x squared. So what we're clearly going to do instead is use the power series representation of e to the x, compose it with negative x squared, and then we're going to integrate. Importantly, we're going to be left with this infinite series, and we'll have to remind ourselves of different properties we've had previously on how to get the accuracy that we need. So first things first, let's create the Taylor series representation of this function right here. And so it's going to be this e to the x right here. The only difference is going to be we're going to compose it here with the negative x squared. And so I'll just write that in right here. So negative x squared. And we can't forget uh, to evaluate this uh, divided by k factorial. My next work is just to make sure that I don't have any issue with my interval and convergence at all, but all x values that I could plug in here would land on the original interval of convergence, so we're just fine. Specifically from zero to one is all I really care about in this case. Um, one thing I'm going to do right here is just split apart the negative and then use some little exponent rules to clean this up real fast to make my life in the next step easier. So this is an alternating series that actually will be very important here soon. Uh, this is x to the 2k over k factorial. So now that I have this Taylor series representation of e to the negative x squared, I also remember that I'm allowed to integrate term by term. So the integral of e to the negative x squared is the same as the term by ter term integration of this statement right here. And so I'll rewrite this real fast. This negative one is just a constant term. It doesn't get affected by the integration. Here, I'm gonna add one. So this becomes x to the 2k plus one, and then divide that by 2k. So I'll write this as k factorial times this 2k plus one. And again, just using the anti-power rule right there. Importantly though, is I'm going to evaluate this from zero to one. And so what I need to do is take this and evaluate this from zero to one. I think one of the hardest parts about this application is that the notation just gets kind of mind boggling. But remember, we're just going to evaluate this power series from these two values are all we care about. And actually, I can rewrite this statement right here because what this evaluation means is I'm gonna take this series, which represents this function. So I'm gonna take this series and I'm first gonna plug in a one here. If I plug in a one here for x, um, this is just gonna be a factor of one. So this whole thing simplifies into negative one to the k over k factorial times two k plus one. So that's that summation. And then minus when I plug in a zero here, but if I plug in a zero here for x, I have this factor of zero and every term in this is going to go to zero. So plugging in zero actually has no effect. So mo most simply is that this integral right here is represented by this series right here, again, because the minus zero doesn't do anything. This is not a power series. This is a series that has just these coefficients or these terms described here. Um, what we'll do next is expand this a little bit. So first step is when k is equal to zero, I'll get just a one on top for negative one to zero. I get zero factorial times two times zero plus one. It's just times one, so that's, again, zero factorial is equal to one. That's an important part there. Uh, when k is one, 
That will be a negative one, so I'll have this negative one here. And the denominator, that's one factorial. And then this will end up being three. And then the next term will be when k is equal to two. This will be positive, um, always a one on top. And then I have two factorial times two times two plus one, which is five. And then before I keep going with that analysis and write out more terms, I'm kind of lazy and don't want to do any more work than I need to. So what I'm going to do is figure out how many terms I'm going to need to have the accuracy that was requested. Important to this conversation is the fact that this is an alternating series. I won't go back and display the theorem that we know, but if you remember this conversation, I thought Julian did a really cool job in showing a visual of this alternation that goes on as you take these partial sums of any any alternating series. The point being, if you're looking for how accurate is the nth partial sum, it's always as accurate as at least the next term. Importantly, this statement is only true for the alternating series. But again, I have this alternation right here because it's negative one to the k. But again, what I'm saying is if I am thinking of how accurate is at any partial sum, so stopping at any value right there, how do I know how accurate it is? The point is it's at least as accurate as the next value or the absolute value of the next value. And so what I'm going to do is look at the error in an nth term, meaning I'm going to take this expression for the terms of this series and I'm going to plug in n plus one because I'm analyzing this term right here. So it's not a series anymore. It's just one term. So I have negative one to the n plus one over n plus 1 factorial times 2 times n plus 1 plus 1. And let's clean this up a little bit. Well, first and foremost, I didn't put my absolute values on here. And so that actually negates this part. The negative positive won't matter. And so I'm just going to have a 1 up there. And then down here, I have n plus 1 factorial. And then this would be 2n plus 2. So this is 2n plus three on this factor right here. And now actually I don't need these absolute values um, specifically because there's nothing in this expression that would be negative. Again, the n is representing this iterative variable that starts at zero and is positive. So neither this factorial or this factor could be negative. The question is, is when will this be less than or equal to 0 0.0001? And this might be a little unsatisfying if you've been following along for all of the rigor and the work that we're doing. But because of this factorial statement right here, there's actually no easy way to solve this um, using al algebraic way of solving it. So what I'm going to do is a numerical approach. I'm going to plug in values for n right here until I get out a value less than 0 0.0001. And after plugging in a few numbers, um, what I found is that when this is n equals 6, when this is n equals 6, this expression right here is 0 0.00001323. And to be honest, n equals 5 was really close. It was 0 0.0001 something, but just above 0 0.001, I had to go to n equals 6. So that means I need to calculate the first six terms. So to just finish this up, I've written these first six terms. Again, given this information, I know that I needed six terms to get the accuracy that I'm looking for. And important to note, and this can be really confusing as we go through all these properties with the k's and the n's, this s sub n is the first nth term. So I'm starting at zero here. So my k is not going to six, but you can see that I have six terms. That's what's being described by s sub n. But I've written these all out and I'm not going to evaluate these by hand. I mean, I could, which is pretty amazing at this point, because most of these aren't too hard. That factorial is just six. That'd be one over 42. But this becomes 120 times 11. I'm not going to do all that, but I did calculate it uh, in my calculator. And what I got is that this value actually, I should say, is approximated by that. But this summation right here is equal to 0 0.74673. And I could write more decimal places, but actually even writing the three down seems a little superfluous because I've only guaranteed an accuracy for those four, first few four spots or two um, one ten thousandth of accuracy. But this, again, 
without having an elementary integral, indefinite integral for e to the negative x squared, what I was able to do is rewrite this function right here with a Taylor series representation. It was important, and this will always be important, that my representation I'm using is on the interval or the values that I'm using for this definite integral, I should say, or anywhere I'm evaluating this Taylor series at is on my interval of convergence, which it was um, here in zero and one. Then importantly, I have this power series, but this evaluation is more of just an arithmetic move, right? I'm plugging in values and evaluating. So I plug in a one for this, this expression right here. So this is just saying one plugged in here for X minus zero plugged in here for X, but every term would have a zero as a factor, so that would be nothing. So then this indefinite, this definite integral is represented by this series right here. Looking for this accuracy was based on this property of the alternating series that might not always be the case, but because this is an alternating series, it's a bit, a bit more easy to find this kind of accuracy. I found I needed six terms, so I expanded until I had my first six terms, feeling comfortable that this, rep this value right here is a dang good approximation, accurate up to 0 0.0001.